What's up YouTube, Jeff back again today with a very exciting Samsung video for you guys. And today we're gonna to be talking more about the Galaxy S24 Ultra April 2024 update. It was actually a rather sizable update in the sense that it added quite a new uh, few camera tweaks, fixes, improvements. And I want to give a little review of those as well as my experience with the battery life, animations, general smoothness and all that kind of stuff. And where the S24 Ultra stands as of today, which is April 1st, 2024, in terms of versus where it launched a few months ago. Before we get started, I do want to thank my son, Jonathan, my three-year-old son. We got some dinos to hang out in the video. We got the Edmund Tanya, and we also have the Pashi Silophosaurus. We always appreciate him for giving us some dinos or animals or other toys to hang out in the video. Also want to remind you guys, if you want to save some money on your wireless service, you can do so by switching to my friends and partners over at Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile has premium wireless starting at just $15 a month. And right now they have one of their best deals where you can get unlimited premium wireless for just $15 a month, which is in fact 50% off the usual price for the unlimited plan. Now, Mint does have a plethora of different plans, options, sizes for your needs. They've got a five gigabyte a month plan, 15 gigabyte a month plan, the 20 gigabyte a month plan, and the aforementioned unlimited plan. But as I said, with their current deal, all the plans are $15 a month, so you can take advantage of that and get 50% off the unlimited plan. All of Mint's plans come with limited talk and text, nationwide coverage, mobile hotspot included as well. You can get either a physical SIM or an eSIM if you want, if you have a phone like the S24 Ultra that supports it. You don't have to wait for them to ship it out to you if you want to get it right away. You can do that. We've been using uh, Mint here in the Phoenix, Arizona area for about 17 months. My family switched. We love it. Save a ton of money over the big wireless carriers. And I think you guys will love it too. If you want to give them a try, go to trymintmobile.com slash Springer with links in the pinned comment description as well. Uh, you guys can get on this deal. It's a limited time deal as usual. 50% off the unlimited plan is an absolutely amazing deal. We do appreciate Mint for being partners with the channel. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the May, uh, April 2024 update for the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Uh, just to remind you guys, here's kind of the change log. Uh, my guy Tarun Bats over on Twitter, he posted the change log back when this dropped. Um, this is direct from Samsung. You can see some of the things that were posted over there. The uh, tone for the night environments improved. Expert RAW, which still hasn't gotten an update. So just to let people know, that was supposed to get an update along with the April patch and hasn't happened yet. So the second feature, which is supposed to improve the uh, low light contour and color expression in Expert Raw, that hasn't occurred because the Expert Raw update hasn't been pushed out. They did say it would be scheduled later, so we already knew that. Improved text clarity when using zoom scale and photo mode. Talk about that today. That's one of the things that I really spent a lot of time taking a lot of zoom shots of text uh, over the last week, just to kind of test that. And then the 480 by 480 res resolution has been added to support instanced slow mode in smaller sized videos. Uh, of course, stability and all those other things like that. So the main things that I was interested in um, were one and three, the tone of night shots, which means basically the white balance, of course, and the improved text clarity of zoom scale in photo mode. So of course, the zoom is definitely something that needed some work when the phone launched. Of course, it lost the true 10 times zoom that we had on the S23 Ultra. So a lot of people were thinking this would be a step down. And in some instances it was. So that's definitely something I wanted to look at. Also want to look at stability and battery life. We'll talk a little bit about that in this video as well. I'm actually going to make a separate video talking about this 480 by 480 resolution uh, instant slow mo because I think that's an interesting feature that some people might want to know how to do. So I might make that to a how to video. But the other one's mainly about the improvements to the camera and the battery life. So let's talk a little bit about the camera first. Uh, I made a little album here of the photos that I took. First, I'll talk a little bit about the night shots and some other people have commented on this. Night mode is greatly improved. Uh, one thing that they did is they made sure that the shadows are now a little bit more correct. So that when you take shots at night, not everything gets overly brightened. Um, you also have a little less flare from things like street lamps and things like this. This is a photo I took of my wife's car, took another one as well, just so you can kind of see some of the shadows here in the foreground are preserved um, and everything is not overly brightened like it was previously in night mode. You also have a very good job with the uh, color. So the white balance you can see here on the LED headlights, the color is very, very well done. A little bit of flare, but not too bad considering this is a night shot and uh, compared to how this looks in person. Also, the rest of the color is really well preserved. Um, the color for brake calipers, for instance, here, very close to the true life uh, version and very well preserved as a night shot, considering, again, how dark it was outside when I took this photo. So I do think they've improved quite a lot in night. Um, I don't take as many photos at night as I used to. Now that I'm a parent of two small kids, I'm not out running the streets, but uh, taking a few photos, it seems that that has certainly improved quite a lot. Now, the zoom text, I did take a lot of these in the daytime, and uh, it has improved quite a lot. So I believe this one was at 10x, 
and then I took another one at 100x. The 100x in particular has really improved, so that it's not so blurry. It's definitely readable now. Previously, it wasn't necessarily even readable. You had a lot of tough time reading the text on some of these signs uh, in 100x zoom mode. So this one actually I also took at 100, just at the top part of the sign. This is one I took, I think, at 10. 10 is like super clear. It's crazy. It looks like, you know, a regular shot with the primary lens. This is also at 100x. This one I was at 10x. I took this one, it was not of text, just to see the zoom clarity at 10x of a non-text object. And overall, very impressed with the zoom uh, clarity. There's a little bit of glare here. This wasn't a very bright shot here in the Arizona sun. But overall, the zoom mode has been improved, not just on text. This one was at 100x. It struggled a little bit, I think, because the car here in the foreground, maybe, and also the shadows there on the doorway of the house. But you can still read it. It says 13100, but not as good as some of the other ones. This was 100x as well. I think this one was 100x. Maybe this one was 10 and this was 100. Uh, this one, I think, was 100. And then this one was 10. So 110 here on the street sign. But overall, the text clarity has been very, very good uh, in terms of improvements in this update. I think a lot of people have noticed this. And also, like I said, the night mode was something I also noticed as well. Overall, I've been really impressed with the camera updates. I still don't know that the 10 times zoom is quite as good as the S23 Ultra because it's not a true 10 times periscope. But they've certainly went the extra mile with the computational photography to try to bring them a little bit closer. Um, even though it isn't perfect, the text clarity definitely has improved a lot, which is something that a lot of people were complaining about when the phone first came out. Uh, let's talk about some of the other things in terms of the uh, features and improvements. The animations are now, in my opinion, almost flawless. I mean, you can always, you know, add some flair to them. And of course, people are always going to slow them down and criticize. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I have not noticed any hiccups with the animations on One UI 6.1. And the other issue that I mentioned at launch was the uh, lag when you touch the folder, the touch lag. That is virtually gone now uh, with this update. So that is certainly something that I complained about a lot when the phone first launched. It bothered me to no end. I was so close to even switching back to my S23 Ultra, the Fold 5 for a while. That's gone. Battery life, I will say, has taken a bit of a hit. So it's not that great. I haven't had a great experience with battery life so far. I am running the always on display, you know, always, or on auto mode, which means it's on most of the day. And I do use wireless Android auto, but still I've been getting to, you know, I wake up sometimes at seven or 8 a.m. And, and go to around midnight and I'm getting, you know, down to like 10% or I may have to charge sometime in the evening, which I wasn't having to do before this update. So some other people have also mentioned that their, their update has, has compromised battery life a little bit. I want to comment on one other thing too, though, that people were talking about in terms of things that are missing from the One UI 6.1. Uh, people got the S23 update this week. They were talking about this as well. And that is the always on display brightness control. So we've known since we got the S23 Ultra, uh, the S24 Ultra, there's no way to change always on display brightness like you could previously. And people got the S23 One UI 6.1 this week They've been complaining about it. Samsung's now bringing that back. So I just wanted to mention this in this video. I made a video about it the other day. Um, someone had tweeted, one of the leakers had tweeted, where is it, right here? Tarun tweeted uh, over on the Samsung forums, always on display brightness will be coming back this week. So that's something to look forward to. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, Samsung's really made a lot of improvements. Of course, there are some small things here and there that people are complaining about still. I'm trying to wrangle all of them up in comments and make videos so we can give Samsung feedback. Um, so if you're still having an issue or there's something you don't like, let me know. But for all intents and purposes, the way I use my phone, this is as close to as perfect as this phone has been. And it's made a huge leap from when it launched at the end of January to April 1st. So in two months, I believe Samsung's really done a lot with these two really big updates they dropped and really improved the overall experience and made this uh, a phone that I really enjoy and love. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification icon for more videos like this. Great Samsung content on here. Again, check out our friends and partners at Mint Mobile. If you want to change up your wireless service and save a lot of money, try mintmobile.com slash Springer to check it out. Also in the pinned comment description. Appreciate you guys checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.